Mate, you got a light? Go have something. Well, you got me. What I'd basically say to someone is um, just think about the consequences of all of your actions at the end of the day. It might seem like such a small thing to just pick up a knife in the kitchen and go out on the street. If you feel like everyone else is doing it, then you think, <clears throat> why not? I had a lot of anger bubbling up inside of me, so I, for me it didn't seem like a big thing to so if I see that person to just pull out the knife and, and like literally just stab the person you know what I mean and I didn't think to myself well that might kill the person and then I'm gonna be like, on the run and what about my family and what about his family you know what I'm saying he's got a mother he's got this he's got that I didn't think about any of those things but you gotta understand when you're angry and you're going out on the streets day in day out you've got people that want to do bad things to you you know what I mean? It doesn't. It doesn't feel like a big thing to to say in your head. Yeah, just pull out a knife and do what you have to do. You know what I'm saying? And if someone else is gonna pull out a knife on you, they've pulled out. It, they've pulled it out on me. Then well, I'm gonna pull out my knife on them, and I'm gonna get them before they get me. So that's basically what it came down to. Like, if people are out there looking to do bad things to me, then I'm gonna do bad things to them before they get a chance to. And that's basically that attitude I had. That's how I felt. He had a knife, I had a knife, and I'm standing there, and the, the harsh reality of what knives can do and what carrying a knife really hit me in that situation, and I don't really feel like I was prepared. So little time, we all got our problems. You wouldn't want to live with mine. I guess I wouldn't want to live with yours. I shed tears. Here I am, I've pulled out my knife. Here I am, he's standing there. Now what? Like, you know what I'm saying? And to be perfectly honest with you, I didn't really, I didn't, I wasn't prepared for that until I, it actually happened. And I didn't know how I'd react until it happened. And that's when I really realised, like, to be honest with myself, I'm not willing to be just stabbing someone up, leaving them for dead. You know what I'm saying? That's not my personality and I don't really feel like that's who I want to be. I mean, in the situation, funnily enough, in the situation, to kind of show you how things can escalate, after I pulled out my knife, He's pulled out a gun. Still don't feel like I've got the knife out my back. Yeah, I find it hard to trust. And I got stabbed in the leg, but my back's been scarred enough. I think we all know that it's it's quite a big problem now. You see on the papers, the, the news show it a lot that a lot of teenagers are getting killed by these knives and you know I know people like me I've been stabbed personally but I know people that have died from being stabbed it's not about pointing fingers and saying let's let's blame it on hip-hop like let's blame it on this that the other because these things aren't going away these things are a part of the culture so what you've got to do is understand the culture and you got to basically give Give them an option. Give them something that they can do rather than do that. You know what I mean? So what, you can't just say, just be different. You can't just say to a person, just completely change who you are, stop being who you are. What you've got to do is, you've got to say, use your energies and put them into something else. We've got to give them an option out there. <laughs> Why would you choose a life like that? And why would you want to be a person that can just stab someone up or kill someone without no remorse? Like, like me, I've got a mum, like, you know what I'm saying? I've got to look my mum in the eye at the end of the day. And I know she, like, there's unconditional love. But at the end of the day, if, 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 she, if I come home and said I've killed someone, like, the police turned up at the door and said, she, like, your son's killed someone. He's gone out premeditated and killed someone. You know what I'm saying? And then just walked on about his life like normal. No, she's not, she's not going to look at me like the same ever again kind of thing and I could never take that. Bottom line is I don't want to be that person. Are you going to drive later or shall I drive? No, I'll drive. I'll put her in the car. Yeah. You, you take the flowers. Okay.
he wasn't allowed to sort of turn on, you know. The loudest thing about him was his laugh. It's just accustoming yourself as well to not having that person around. You know, you have to, you know, that key won't go in the lock, that he won't be home, he won't be saying, hmm, what's for dinner, mum? You know, I can smell dinner cooking. And mm. we had a nice, as I said, we had balance. He used to keep the house tidy, I used to do the cooking, and we had a, we had a nice little balance at home, didn't we? never think you'll have to bury your child as a parent. The last thing I thought I'd ever do was have to bury my own child. Every time a soldier's killed at war, I'll cry because I know as a mother, the fact that your son or your child has died is so much harder to deal with. And every killing that's on the street, you just think, the ripple effect, the family, the friends. I just did not believe it. I was, I was just like, no way. Because I just like, I felt, because I just seen him. I was thinking, it's like the shock of it all. And it wasn't until I got to the hospital and I was thinking, I just want to see him, and I had to wait for the nurses. And then when I got in, I was just like, because the things as well, they just cleaned him up and he still had the tubes in his mouth. And you're expecting him to just get up and say, oh, it's yeah. all right. It's hard when you're a youth, showing it, saying that walking away is, is bigger. Um, that same boy attacked Benjamin on three different occasions in front of the old girlfriend, like he was trying to G Benjamin up to fight in front of the girl. And Benjamin went and spoke to one of the girls he was going out with, Lizzie, and said, I'm not fighting him in front of that girl. I think it, it wasn't so much Benjamin. I think somebody would have died at that boy's hands at the end of the day because we afterwards found out that there'd been incidents where he had threatened other boys with a knife. Um, and uh, nothing had ever been done about it. And I, I do... I don't think it tried to, you know, the court case and that tried to make it look as if it was him and Benjamin. But sincerely in my heart, it would have been, so if it hadn't been Benjamin, it would have been someone else. He walked around regularly with a knife. We've heard a lot of things like one time he stole a car, he crashed the car, left the, his jacket in the car, uh, which had a, another hunter's knife, the same sort of knife that he killed Benjamin with. Even the jacket alone would have shown that he had an obsession, as one of his, one of the witnesses said, the boy had an obsession about knives. We were completely let down by the prosecution who mm. were acting on Benjamin's behalf. They didn't do their job properly. There was no picture of Benjamin at the trial. There was no character. We had some Fantastic reports from the doctor, from the, his teachers, from a lot of people who could have just, if they had done that and they came back with the same result, I'd say, well, farewell and good. What could we say? Because if they'd done a good job, but they didn't. What is making them be so aggressive to be like that? Kids are, some people say, well, if someone's coming to look for me, I'm, I'm going to carry a knife, I, I'm going to get there before them. Yeah. Why well, that think... instantly causes that, the knife becomes, whatever purpose that knife is picked up, defensive or offensive, it's immediately offensive, because there's a risk of you damaging somebody seriously with that knife. We hear about the, about the deaths on the street, there's still thousands of children, use that are hospitalized due to stab wounds yeah. that don't die you see these people i've worked in more i know big flash cars 
gold in their hands, gold around their neck, trainers, designers. People, some kids look at that and they're inspired by that. Mm. If you went and got those people off the street, like you can do, like you've got the laws to do in this country, they'd be less inclined to think that that is a, a nice thing to do. But they do still let that big man go around and sell his drugs, have his little runners. They turn a blind eye to it. I don't know what benefit it is to them. I think they just think, well, let them sort it out themselves. But I've seen it. Yeah, kill each other. You know, let them get on with it. But it is, it is an attitude, I'm afraid, that's affected the whole society. It does upset me, the fact that I'm taking flowers up for my son, whereas he should be coming around with flowers for me on a Sunday, with his, coming around for his Sunday dinner and bringing me flowers. You know, that is what upsets me. I should be giving him some money to go and bust a bottle of champagne when it's his birthdays and things like this. There's someone that like, we went to school with, everyone went to school with, a very popular person, Benjamin Wright got fatally stabbed and killed like when he was only 17 like it's quite a few years back now and the, that that you know what I mean that hurts because he never got to even see 18 you know what I mean he never got to be a man he never got to to live you know what I'm saying and like on that like that one's it's, it's hard as well because his mum actually got to like talk to me about doing a, a tracking memorial of him and that like, just and I feel like, honestly, that this is months ago, you know, and honestly, I feel like the biggest loser ever for not doing this, but I can't honestly put this guy's whole life into a verse. And that's what I'm trying to um, convey to people, like, how this is, these are lives that we're playing with kind of thing. And she's asked me to put his life on a verse, like, to write down his life and put it on a track. And, like, music's always been there for me, but it's like, in this case, I don't think music's enough. Basically, I want to get just the point across that it just changes, ruins lives. It takes lives, and it's not only the lives that it takes, it's the people that are left behind that have got to live with that day in, day out. You know what I'm saying? And what she said to me was, um, Can you please make it about knife crime in general as well? Because she wanted to convey a message to younger people that are thinking about picking up a knife. This is what can happen. He's, he's affected everybody, that has affected everybody's mm. lives and I don't think, people say, oh, as time goes on, I think as time goes on, you learn to live with it and through being in that position, I've been in contact with a lot of other mums that go through, this, going through the same dilemma and I cannot say anything to them other than you learn to live with it. I cry every single day. There's not a day I don't go past where I don't think of Benjamin. No. You know, um, I think you just learn to live with it, and that's all I can say, really.